Good morning, my gorgeous babes and babettes. Welcome back to the Chinooser. Um, welcome back to yet another Vlogmas video. Guys, I actually have a date with the library right now, but you know what? You know what? Let's get this done. And then we can go and study. And then we can go and shutter the booker. So, as an international student, I feel like there is one thing that there's one piece of information that we gatekeep hey we we will gate keep this one thing i'm speaking for myself specifically i'm a detef baby so i'm sponsored by detef which is the same sponsor i am the kids who are home students in botswana so obviously we're always wondering or people are always sort of wanting to ask me okay what is the what is the variance what is the difference like are we treated the same financially which first thing i'm gonna say is that that's not possible guys like so the question by the masses that is constantly asked but like secretively is are international students generally funded more or colloquially to say richer than the average home student by virtue of DTEF, right? Because that's what I'm going to talk about. Um, that's the one I'm familiar with. That is my funder. Hey, mummy. <laughs> Let me tell you about me as an international student, how my journey was financially, how I was funded from me being in Botswana to me living in London and sustaining myself in, I would say, living, I guess, comfortably. The first um, check, oh no, why am I saying check? But the first, um, I'll say check, but like you, you get what I mean, yeah. The first check I got from DTF, guys, please ignore the trains passing by my room. They just decided to give me a room with the trains this year and i'm not about it i'm mad about it okay <laughs> so the first check i got from dtf was for my visa for me to pay for my visa and to pay for my health surcharge so before you come to the uk you have to understand that the uk health system is different from like the american health system it's very similar to the botswana health system though where um, what they're implying is that the NHS, which is like the, you know, the, yeah, the health system is free for the general public in the sense that you can get free consultations da, 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 and all of that stuff. A sharp. So to pay for all of that, DTF, um, gave us, I guess I'm speaking as myself for myself as a London student this varies ever so slightly from students all across um the international globe right obviously obviously detef gave us thirty nine thousand pula for those for those two things sharp um and so that money is not for you to play with it's not for you to it's for visa and health surcharge and then um the next thing was your plane ticket so detef booked our plane ticket for us um, at the time in which you were expected to go right before university starts. So um, the plane tickets range from 8,000 pula being almost the cheapest to 18,000 pula being, I guess, in the higher pricing, depending on what time of the year that you're coming. Most of us come around September time, and that's where our plane ticket is around 8,000 pula. 8, 19,000, you get me? Okay, so now you're in the UK, um, but before you come to the UK, you, we are given yet another check called a pre-departure okay so you're given something called a pre-departure allowance which is you're still in Botswana but this is the allowance you use to settle your um guys if I keep looking down just know what I I have notes I wrote some notes so that nah, nah, it's all gram. you settle your accommodation you get some winter clothing and you also have the book allowance inside right and what's interesting the the interesting thing is you guys in Botswana if you're in uni of course some people settle that on accommodation outside but I guess like it's like let me not talk about Botswana because I actually don't know but here when you come you have to like you have to get your own place you have to pay your own rent you know it's not the government paying your rent for you but this is specific for london i know it's different for the canadians and the australians those particular people have the government paying for their rent we pay for our own rent so our pre-departure allowance was if i remember correctly around sixty-six thousand pula for all of these things um and then what's interesting is that 
rent for all of us in London is different because you can imagine, um, can, just depending where you live, I live, um, it, it works with zones. And then the first zone is the most central zone and known to be the most expensive. And then I think we have the fifth zone, which is like, yeah, out there. So, and it's known to be much cheaper, but like, I think you're going to be spending a lot more on transport, which is also expensive to get to the center of the city where most of the universities and like the, the city is basically, so um if i'm going to talk about myself my the rent that i had to settle um we pay rent per every three months right so you sort of just like a like some people have to give a i think it's called a down payment something like that where to show them that you'll be able to pay your rent over time so you give them like a, a lump sum of money right before you start actually paying rent i didn't have to deal with that to be honest i live in university accommodation which is such a blessing and i didn't have to deal with a lot of things like guarantors you're in a down payment and stuff like that but some people have to they have to get guarantors they have to all it's oh it can be stress let me tell you it can be stress but um I'll just tell you my rent per month is about 11,100 bula. So if we were to talk every three months, it would have to be about like 33,300 bula. Oh my God, guys, I forgot to tell you this. Um, This is very important because it depends which accommodation you got. You need to be very strategic about the type of accommodation you get in these big cities because as much as I was paying this much, which is quite reasonable to be honest, I had a friend at some point who was paying like 119,000 bula and she had like no idea um, that like we had to strategically look for accommodation on our own. So please learn from that lesson if you're going to embark on this journey. Cheers. So already like you can see what the entire check is you know, it part looks like a bohari. And with the remaining money, you have to get your winter clothes. We don't really get books here. Like, we don't, you don't need to. I don't, let me not expose us, but like, they give us book allowance, but we don't need to get books. Oh, now, when I speak about my school fees, I think school fees for international students is almost like standard all across the board for most of us. Um, our school fees in Bulas, guys, I think you notice how I'm talking, I'm converting everything from pounds to Bulas just so. I know that my audience is the general Botswana public, general Botswana public, and you guys understand bullies more than pounds, obviously. So my school fees, me personally, it's 527,000 bula compared to what I believe from what I've been told, um, the home student in Botswana paying about 30,000 bula, 68,000, um, and 34 bula this is specific guys this is specific for london so that's how much we get every three months we don't get allowance every month i don't know if they're trying to teach us like you gotta the learning we're learning how to be soldiers so that is approximately twenty two thousand six hundred to twenty two thousand seven hundred per month and yeah and obviously you have to maintain yourself maintain your lifestyle maintain um get food all that stuff you know um and transport to be honest when you live in london we work under a system called tfl transport for london which can be pricey because it's the tube it's the underground you tap in you tap out and um transport i guess on a month would be about like four thousand bula for transport going in and out of school if it's an everyday thing and stuff like that and also just like traveling generally this is specific for me considering I live close to the center of London. For people who live who live um far out would pay a lot more. Then let's see. For food, I spend about like I want to say 50 pounds per week, which is around like 800 900 bula per week. This is I yeah, but like just, you know, I it differs. This is a very subjective one. And then self maintenance, I would say around like seven thousand eight thousand bula per month and yeah that is i guess if i was to break down the the london expenditure and how um dtf facilitates us financially you can 
you guys i know you guys are so curious about it i just you know i it's like stop acting like you didn't want to know this information do with it what you may i'm glad that the general public is informed and yeah the funds we're given is enough for us to learn strategic budgeting and stuff like that and we do live comfortable i speaking for myself i feel like i live comfortably and on the side on the side you do have like an option to get a job i know that the one thing that we can't do especially sadly for some of us in botswana who had like businesses we can't continue our bu businesses on a larger scale here so i can't continue pierced by a princess i can't what, what else was i doing i just think it's hard, it's hard all the businesses that i had in Botswana, i can't really transfer them here because my visa doesn't allow that but i can get a job for example i work for my university as a student content creator and obviously like here we're paid per hour so like um if you work an hour your the minimum wages are around like 10 pounds 0.5 um i get paid a little over that just ever so slightly above that and that's re like it you sustain you can you like was you know was and also thank just the Botswana government for the scholarship on its own and i'm speaking from a genuine heart like i'm not really sucking up to you guys i'm just genuinely saying like you did really good we we are blessed we're blessed in jay so yeah guys um i hope you guys appreciate this little piece of information like i said do with it as you may and mwah, mwah, mwah. have a beautiful day let me go study i was supposed to have breakfast with you guys but the thing is i'm such a horrible multitasker that i can't eat and talk at the same time but it's a very short video i'm just gonna edit it and then post it for vlogmas day yaboraro um, a very popular thing about international students, I think the reason why people think or believe that we're so um, abundantly funded is because all of us, majority, majority of us, the moment we step foot on these cold countries, in these new lands, the first purchase or a tip, your first, your first tip, tip, iPhone Pro something. We integrate into the first world so seamlessly and this is evident in like the technology that we use and everything like that. So I don't blame people for believing that. I also do think that we are abundantly funded compared to the like home students. But I think all of us are still given the responsibility to use these funds that were given um, responsibly. I think is the best way to put it. <laughs> slays so that's my little sneak peek into international student lifestyle and international student funding i hope you guys enjoyed the video don't forget to like share and subscribe okay <laughs> love you